rest, but I'm definitely going to see bushes that are impossible. And as you can see, it's gorgeous dying black flowers because they couldn't be just in the proper rest. Good morning everyone, welcome. We have a new video today, a sad video, very sad video. Something a little bit different, because today, today we're at Auschwitz. Auschwitz, Nazi concentration camp, the biggest one. Not only is there one, but Himmler himself. Thought it was great, he wanted part two. So today, we're going to be looking at both camps. Learn a bit about the Holocaust, the camps themselves, how the prisoners were treated, and uh, the story will unfold. So there'll be no narration in this video. I'm going to show you inside both camps. I'm going to provide some subtitles and some information so those of you that aren't familiar can educate yourselves. Education is port important. History should never be forgotten. History never should be hidden away. We all need to learn history so it can't repeat itself. Okay, let's go. <laughs> so here we are at the meeting point of the tour. Auschwitz 1. So there's a free shuttle bus. You can get it between the camps, Camp 1 and 2. And also from the train station as well. The shuttle bus between camps is free. Uh, they have a toilet over there, but the toilet line is around 20 minutes long, perhaps more, especially for the women. So you might want to go toilet first. They have coffee and things like that for vending machines. And um, you arrive 30 minutes before your tour. Uh, there is one thing I noticed is when you book your ticket in advance on the website, a lot of things aren't on the website, otherwise that they are in reception. For example, I was on the website, there was no Spanish-speaking tours available, there was no English-speaking tours, but going in reception on the day, they had five slots for an English tour and 12 slots for a Spanish tour. So you may think you can secure a ticket early on the website, however, it seems like they have more things going on in there. So you might want to wait um, the day off to get your ticket, especially in the off-season because then less people are going to be here and there's more ticket options available. So it's something to consider. What we did, we bought German tickets because it was our last day to come here. And luckily they switched them out for an English one for us, absolutely free. So a few little tips there. So we're just waiting for our tour, then we're going to go in Auschwitz one and um, yeah, see it, see what happens. <laughs> So a lot of Catholic priests and monks. As a result, Gestapo prisons, they were very quickly overcrowded, so there was an urgent need to create a huge 
concentration camp. At the beginning of the war,
So of course, if you take a look at those two, you will compare them and you will see that the sound from those from different studies are very slightly but still. Well, you can find the first and the last one, the first 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 one, no way.
So that was camp one. Now we're heading over to camp two, ordered by Himmler himself. A bigger Auschwitz. Auschwitz Birkenau part two. So inside camp two, just to give you an idea of how cold it was. You see this small little river here, it's frozen over completely. Our prisoners, Jews, Romanis, Gypsies, all given one item of clothing, wooden clogs. Imagine how cold it was in the winter. Absolutely insane. But yeah, we've just entered camp two now. And uh, it is absolutely massive. <laughs> so you can see behind me here the main entrance. Uh, the gates of death, I believe they called it. Because once you're going through there, you're not coming back. You can see uh, as the train comes in here, this is where the selection process takes place. A lot of people here never knew they were going to be executed or sent to the gas chamber. Otherwise, they never would have gone, right? They thought they were being forced into a work, a labor camp. And you can see here, there's one giant area right here with little watchtowers. And it would be very difficult to escape. And again, on the other side, exactly the same there. And the selection process where they got off the train, this is where they would go through and decide who is fit for work. Are you a child? Are you a, are, are you a woman? It's that simple. If so, there's a high chance you're going to end up in the gas chamber, killed or whatnot. Some of the lucky ones, the fit ones, the healthy ones, they were selected for the workforce. And those ones had some of the best chances of survival. However, they would be the ones that would send their fellow prisoners, if you will, to the gas chambers, carry them into the ovens, load them in, scoop the ashes, throw the ashes into the nearby river. And that's just one example of a job someone young and healthy would have here. Absolutely crazy. So this is one of the biggest gas chambers in Camp 2. Here they would come in down the steps there, not really get changed, remove their clothes completely because when they were gassed with the Zyklon B, which was put into the roof of the chambers, they were completely naked, you know. They thought they were going for a shower. You'd see fake shower heads being installed into the ceilings, for example. So it wasn't really till the very last minute 
that uh, you know the fate was sort of bestowed upon them and they all realized what was happening. Here you can see the roof has been collapsed in when the Red Army came to sort of liberate everything. Uh, the decision was made to destroy everything and that's why in this area you see so many ruins because they tried to cover it all up. But um, you know lots of evidence, diaries, uh, even traces of uh, Zyklon B were found in hair and things like that. On the outside of these ruins you see slightly uneven parts of the grass over there. That is where the ashes were dumped uh, just behind the behind these buildings right here and then later they were carried a kilometer down there into the river and dumped but yes yeah, absolutely insane isn't it So today this is a memorial, so that's left of all the, uh, the victims and it sort of marks the end of the camp. You can see uh, the little tower right there and where we came in, just so you get an idea of how big this camp is, there's the gate right down there. There'd be rats down there, I bet. So these look around six feet, just over six feet in length. You'd have to lie a long ways. You can sort of see how these are made here. You pretty much just have planks of wood, varying widths and sizes, sat on this kind of log right here. It's nailed on with a couple of nails on each side. And there's a bed. Down here you would have rats, all kinds of disease. I bet the floor was covered. Absolutely covered. I think when people got sick, they couldn't even make it to the toilet, for example. They couldn't leave their wooden board. And uh, what they would do is put their feces on the floor, again attracting more rats, disease, various things. It would be an absolutely horrendous place.
place uh, horrendous living conditions on top of that you're probably freezing in the winter especially with poor clothing blisters on your feet from wooden clogs uh, all while having chicken broth and a very subpar meal to replenish all the calories you may be working uh, it could be physical work it could be skilled work even electricians for example but especially anything physical it's just not enough sustenance to survive and a lot of people did die uh, that way yes yeah crazy really isn't it the original heater that's how they Okay, the tour's come to an end. Uh, I hope you like the video in terms of history. Uh, I know there's a lot of people there, all over the world in fact, uh, people that are just unable to travel. So I hope, especially for those people, that this video helps you uh, with a bit of insight on how the tour operates, but not only that, obviously the history of uh, you know, everything here really, I, it's hard to put into words, but if you want to do this tour, it's uh, 110 zlotis, which is around $27.50, that's American dollars. Uh, the tour is three hours long, there is a lot of walking, um, but it's just one of those places that everyone has to visit at some point. It's a memorial, you know, it's a cemetery, it's history. It's many things, but um, I highly recommend it. Um, yeah. What did you think? Yeah, I think it was creo que fue un un, un tour bastante intenso. Eh, realmente lo que vives aquí no lo vas a vivir en ningún otro lado. Realmente te pone la piel de gallina solo de imaginar cómo las personas vivieron aquí todo lo que les hicieron es un poco trauma, traumatizante eh, pero es parte de de, de, pues, histor de la historia de cultura y, y pues algo que tenemos que ten tenemos que, que saber que todos ten tendríamos que saber deberían eh, explayarse más en eh, cuanto a la educación y mostrarnos esta parte que realmente nadie suele mostrar. Okay. See you in the next video. Uh, anything else I forgot to mention, I'll link in the description below so you can check that out as well. Okay. Adios and I'll see you next time.